Okay, we're going to take a look at dynamic art here. Now, let me start off by saying that I actually haven't coined the phrase dynamic art. I heard it somewhere. I don't even remember where I heard it. And I honestly don't even know who coined the term. But the point is, it sounds cool, and it uh, describes dynamic art well, because, well, it's dynamic. Um, and what I mean by dynamic is that it changes depending on the changes you make. You can see here I've got this text here, and it's editable. Let's say I want to change this word from left to left hand. When I type that, you're going to see that this rectangle expands, and so does the stroke, with that text. So if I were to type my website, tutvid.com, you're going to see that that also expands. Basically, any text you put in here expands, and any text you take away, it just crunches itself in to be dynamic. It changes as you change this. Okay, It gets bigger and smaller, depending on what you have in there. And the same thing with this one down here. But here, I have made the arrowhead and the arrow shaft different pieces so I can stretch out this arrow shaft and when I do that well check it out the whole entire thing stretches out and I can also make it bigger and the whole entire thing gets bigger okay so with dynamic art there's a lot of very cool things it makes editing your files later on a whole lot easier and um, I think you'll find this one really cool and pretty useful too so first thing we need to do is open up dynamic art start all right, let me start out by saying that this is an Adobe Illustrator 10 file so if you have Adobe Illustrator 10 or higher you can open it and it can be found on www.tutvid.com um, navigate to the download section of the site and scroll down a little bit and you will see the Adobe Illustrator downloads area and it will be in there it'll be dynamic art start or dynamic art files or something to do with dynamic art nine chances out of ten I might throw in a little trick no I'm kidding it will be something about dynamic art and uh, it should be pretty easy to find so with that in mind let's get going here so, let me also point out that the reason you downloaded this file was not because it's a blank canvas and I want you to start with the same size as me, but because I have created two layers here and you know how difficult layers are to create. So I decided to create two whole layers for you free of charge. No, I'm kidding. That's not the reason either. The actual real reason, for real this time, seriously, is because I have all of these gradients and wonderful color swatches that I have spent so much time making just for you and to save time in the tutorial itself which is why I shouldn't be rambling on like this so let's get started let's select the left layer here this layer and grab the text tool and swap your fill and stroke color so we've got a black fill and set the stroke to none you can do that by selecting the stroke and either hitting the slash key or clicking the little button that has a cross through it so let's type the word left in all caps on the artboard and set the size to 80 points and we can also set this to bold I believe that's what I had the other one set to and the font on that by the way is myriad so we have this text here now dynamic art lies in the appearance palette so if we check this out we can see that we have characters and default transparency right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new fill by clicking on this little button here and hitting add new fill and you can see whoa there's a new fill. Great. That's what I clicked. Now, nothing has changed. So what we're going to do is make sure you have that fill selected. Make sure you also have your object selected. And go to Effect, Convert to Shape, Rounded Rectangle. Now, we're working in the lower portion of the Shape Options dialog box, and it's going to be the entire time. What we need to do is add some extra width and extra height to this and those numbers are 20 pixels by 20 pixels and we're going to give it a corner radius of about 5 okay so now you can see a definite change we can no longer see our text and we've got a big black rounded rectangle well that's not particularly what we wanted either so let's get something more like we wanted we want to color this so come up here and grab the gradient let me make the gradients a little bigger this gradient right here called sign green and grab your gradient palette and we're going to rotate this to 90 degrees if I recall correctly and that's correct with it going lighter to green at the bottom to darker green at the top okay and we need to drag this fill below the characters okay this almost works like a mini layers palette our characters are our letters so if we have this fill below our characters our characters are gonna sit on top of them that's just what we want because we want to see our characters double click on those characters select them and then select the spearmint green color for them deselect and select again select that text and come back to the appearance palette and hit add new stroke 
Okay, that's once again in that little arrow flyout menu. Now you can see we've stroked the text. But once again, we're going to come up here to Effect, Convert to Shape, and this time we're going to convert this to a regular old rectangle. And we're going to make this 27 pixels of offset, or extra width and height as they like to call it. And this is again in the relative box. The reason I'm doing relative is so that it does change. If I, if I do absolute, it's just going to be like creating regular squares, um, which sometimes is what you want. Don't get me wrong. But not for this tutorial because we are creating dynamic art and therefore it's got to change so we want something that's always going to be relative to what you have inside of that box alright so we can select that stroke and we're going to give that that spearmint green color as well and just to add a little touch of something we are going to hit it with this brush here okay this We'll give it a little touch of charcoal. Why not? It's charcoal thin brush. And uh, there we go. We've got a touch of charcoal to the outside. And we can see if we double click on this and I start putting under spaces, it's going to start spreading out very quickly to the point where we go off screen. That's good because that's true dynamic art. Now we're going to look at creating dynamic art. This is going to be a little bit trickier to create. And this is going to be this arrow. So let's start out by grabbing the polygon tool and mine's already set at a triangle but yours will probably be at a true polygon hit the down arrow key until you get a true triangle and then hold the shift key so you get a triangle that's pointing straight up then go to your selection tool and hold the shift key and rotate that so you've got a, an arrow tip that's pointing straight left and it's perfectly level let me move my layers palette up now grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle right out of there to complete that arrow now select both of these come over here and set the stroke to none and we'll just set the color to this spearmint green now we're coming over here to object and we're gonna group these okay so I just hit group now that they are grouped I'm gonna come into my layers palette and I'm gonna specifically select that group I'm gonna select that little circle there to the right hand side of the layers palette next to that group under the arrow layer you can lock up the left layer by the way so you don't mess with that so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to apply this arrow orange gradient. Okay, And you can see it looks funky because we have two different shapes. We're going to fix that, or at least partially fix it. We are going to find the gradient palette, and it looks like I've lost it. Now it's out here somewhere. Ah, here we go. Hiding on me. And we're going to set the angle on this to negative 90. And you're going to see what that does is it puts the lighter yellow at the bottom and the darker orange at the top. Or I should say lighter orange. And there is a slight color difference, but we're not even going to worry about it. Um, just for the sake of time. Obviously, if you're doing this for someone, you're working for someone, you want to make sure it's as perfect as can be. But these are free, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them. At least, I hope not. So <laughs> select that arrow and... Once again, make sure you have the group selected. You're going to see it's going to give you group appearance. And we're going to say add new fill. And it's going to immediately cover that arrow with black. Because when you don't have type, when you don't have characters, you have contents. So now this fill is on top of the contents. Let me just quickly show you if I drag the fill below the contents, our orange arrow comes back. So we're going to select that fill. And we're going to come up here to effect. And we're going to say convert to shape, rounded rectangle. And this one we're going to add extra width 9 pixels, extra height 9 pixels, and quarter radius of 9 pixels. Quite easy to remember. And we're going to drag this below contents, and we're going to give it this arrow back gradient. It's this blue, and we're going to set this to, I believe, 90 degrees. Nope, that's negative 90 degrees. We want the light blue to be at the bottom. And we'll just add a quick shine, which is why I added all these other shines in here. A shine and a glow, and then it's another shine to the arrow. So make sure you have that arrow selected. We're going to add another fill. Okay, and you can see that our arrow has been covered up because it's been colored that blue. We can color it to green if we want. You can see that we do just have, still have the arrow. But what we want to do is apply that round, that same exact rounded rectangle option. So instead of coming to, or effect, excuse me, not option. We can come in here to convert to shape and hit rounded rectangle again. Or you can just hit apply rounded rectangle to do the same exact thing again. But really, we don't want to do the same exact thing. We want to slightly vary it. So we're going to hit rounded rectangle right here. And it's going to bring up these options again. And instead of the extra width and height being 9, we're going to set them both to 7. Okay. Now we're going to hit OK. Now for the color of this, we're going to set this shine 1. Okay. Now, make sure you have that fill selected. This is important. Make sure you have that fill selected. Select the transparency palette and convert the blend mode to screen. All right. 
just like that. And we're going to reduce the opacity to, oh, something more like, I don't know, let's try 50%. That's way too much. Let's try 85%. There we go. 85% looks good. And one last thing we actually have to do here is we want to drag this fill below the contents, but still above the fill. Okay, just like that. We're going to select that again. And we're going to grab that fill that we just created, that shine, and we're just going to grab it and drag it to the new appearance button here. And it's going to duplicate that. A little screen draw, redraw issue if you have that. It happens sometimes when you duplicate appearances. Just grab the corner of your appearance palette and jiggle it a little bit, and it will fix it. Where all we have to do now is change the color of this, and we need to grab this glow gradient right here, glow one. You can see it automatically applies it, and we still have our transparency settings, which are screen and 85%, so that's quick. So we've got a nice shine and glow. Now we're going to create a new fill, because we want this to be the same exact as this arrow, and we're going to color this one shine two, okay, which I've, yes, yeah, named it shine two, and we're going to convert the blend mode to screen. And we're going to lower the opacity to something about 70. And that's perfect. Move the transparency palette out of the way. Now we're going to grab this arrow and we're just going to resize it. Make it much smaller. And you can see, if you check that out, move the layers palette off the screen. Move the appearance palette over here. This arrow, if we grab, use the direct selection tool and grab the tail end of it and stretch it out, that stretches with it. And of course, as we checked before with our locked text layer, there we go. I can add whatever I want in here, and that stretches as well. So that's really dynamic art. It's really easy to make. Um, if you didn't understand anything, rewatch a part of this tutorial. It's the beauty of video tutorials. It's a little complicated at times, but really, once you understand how exactly it's working, like if you just spend an hour playing with it, you'll understand it, and you'll never look back. You'll just want to create a lot of what you do that way. Um, it's the way I like to create a lot of my stuff. It's so much easier to edit. You can always go back and edit it. It's a very non-destructive way to draw things, and uh, very easy to do, very easy to update. Uh, you can get clients revisions very quickly, and uh, hey, in today's day and age, speed is uh, everything. So... Hope you learned something from this one, and uh, until next time, have a good time.